Hello everyone, I'm George from Ireland. Here I am at the Guards Chapel in London, as I'm belonging to the Brigade of Guards, sometimes called the House Division, the Household Division. There are seven regiments: um, Coldstream Guards, Grenadier Guards, Scots Guards, Irish Guards, and Welsh Guards, as well as the Hall, uh, the Life Guards and the Blues and Royals. They, those last two named the Cavalry Regiments. So this current chapel was built um, in 1838, and it's part of uh, the um, Wellington Barracks uh, complex because it was not until the Napoleonic Wars that the British Army had chaplains at all. And uh, as, as the Duke of Wellington said at the Battle of Waterloo, I don't know what effect these men have on the enemy, but they certainly frighten the life out of me, referring to them as the mere scum of the earth. But um, also it was thought there were no chaplains because it was thought that um, the men um, had not the slightest interest in religion, which is probably overstating it. It was a rather religious era. But anyway, it th thought that they would instil in, in, in some um, moral backbone in the men by preaching to them. And then chaplains became an essential part of the armed forces. And there was a chaplain general for the armed forces um, appointed uh, in 1830 as well, William Dakins. Um, and there were uh, similar chapels built all over the British Empire, which was then at its zenith. So what you've seen here is extensively remodeled because a German bomb hit here in 1944. It was Sunday the 18th of June. It was just a very lucky strike for them, and they killed um, uh, 121 people. So it's more or less the middle of the chapel, which is reconstructed. The end, the choir part, is, is more or less original. And this is the exit, or indeed the entrance, onto Birdcage Walk, that street leading up to Buckingham Palace. So I presume I'm not to approach um, closer here. Surprisingly, at this date, they still got the crib there with the wise men, the Magi. So you can see the altar there, and um, this gorgeous um, gilt inlaid mosaic display of um, Jesus on the cross. Probably can't see it very well from this angle, and various uh, figures. Um, the mourning hymn is taken down from the cross. You can see these regimental flags, rather uh, battle-scarred, tattered, worn, and faded, um, and, and many more of them. A colour, as they call it, as in a flag, a regimental flag. There's the trooping the colour, which takes place hard by here and there are many other uh, little uh, memorials. So um, anyway, I always think someone's going to come here and tell me not to do it. So there's some various little side chapels to, um, uh, to various different regiments. This being, I think, is the Coldstream Guards and their battle honours, the various places where they, they fought are mentioned um, here. So when these, these regimental colours are retired or laid up, hung up here, and you can see lots of plaques on the wall memorials to various uh, men who've served in these regiments long ago, um, uh, sometimes collectively. Here would be an example. Okay, uh, and a little bust to someone here. Now this chap, William Norman Bruce George, Arriba, Royal Artillery and so on. Not sure why he's commemorated here, it's not the Royal Artillery. Anyway, look at this splendid um, display of uh, stained glass windows up there. So. I mean, surely that's not original, surely that didn't just survive the bomb. And then if you look up there, look at the ceiling. Right, so um, the, the ceiling is uh, different, is, uh, so that, that must have been where they had to, had to reconstruct it. It was just a very lucky fluke strike for the Luftwaffe. And then you can see the um, Brigade of Guards flag, the blue and that deep purple and blue. Um, September in 1907 joined in one. And so it goes on. I've been to worship here once on Remembrance Day, 2002, if memory serves. Um, anyway, perhaps that's enough to say about the Guards Chapel. I actually managed to film it, and that was Wellington Barracks in the other side. I will pass Wellington Barracks and show you. And various um, coats of arms for the lifeguards. That's a cavalry regiment. It doesn't mean lifeguards in, in, in the swimming pool. And then Look, they've still got their Remembrance Day wreaths. And then this Roll of Honor of all these um, soldiers, Trooper being, being like private, because it's a cavalry regiment trooper. Their names, these were killed in action, dates of death, things like that, um, place of death, and so forth. Um, and then here, the uh, Scots Guards. They're raised in the, in the mid 17th century. I don't remember the exact. Yeah, and then let me remain through that like acid Latin for nobody wounds me with impunity. So if you hit me, I'm going to get you back. Um, and then they're reefed down there. So they're coat of arms with a thistle up there. Um, and then, for example, you've got all these little uh, 
memorial plaques to various people who served in the regiment, some of whom who lived to ripe old ages, died of natural causes. I saw one to Lord Carrington, um, the conservative politician, former, former um, foreign secretary. And then there's some Welsh cards. It says, um, Cumbel Ambeth, meaning Wales forever, the leek, because of their valiant service at the Battle of Crecy in the leek garden under Edward I. And again, various um, Welsh guardsmen who uh, were killed in action. Um, because remember, the, the ordinary rank for a foot guards regiment is a code of private, it's, it's guardsmen, it's not private. Irish guards, quis separabit, who shall separate us? Um, as in, so, uh, who will separate us from each other, I suppose, break us apart. And then their word of honor, their book here, all um, hand uh, written. So you see the calligraphy there. That's back up towards the chapel. And this one here, on the swaggy melipons, shape upon him, thinks badly of it, and the garter, for the order of the garter, one of the symbols of the royal family here. And the interview with the that Knights of the Garter Chapel in the Windsor Castle wasn't permitted to film that, unfortunately. And their word of honor. Um, and um, then over here, I'm not sure which this one is then. Oh, the Household Cavalry, because the Household Cavalry, those two regiments, there's the Lifeguards and the Blues and Royals. The Blues and Royals wear blue, the Lifeguards wear red tunics. Um, now, the Blues and Royals used to be two separate regiments until 1967. There was the Blues and there was the Royals. They're amalgamated into the Blues and Royals. So, and the British Army has been cut back and cut back and cut back. I mean, it peaked, let's say, just before, or just after the First World War, looking at peacetime standing now, not wartime, about 400,000 troops. It's now 80,000. Consider the population in the UK is now 70 million. It would have been about 45 million at the time. So even in relative terms, it's much, much smaller. Okay, it's, it's um, a fifth of what it was. But in relative terms, it's maybe more like an eighth of what it once was. Okay, so this is Wellington's Barracks. Oh, you can go right up here. Okay, because there, there, is, there is a museum. I've been into the Guards Museum. Um, and then, so you see here, there, the colours, like their, their flag of the Brigade of Guards or the Household Division, same thing. And look at this little arm, armoured car, but it's got a Brigade of Guards flag on it with a, with a parachute symbol. So not for the parachute regiment, because they used to do some parachuting. They were not primarily parachutists. And this is, this is Birdcage Watch this street. That presumably there must have been cages with avians on it at some point. But the aviary has long since uh, disappeared. Now this is Wellington Barracks, and I was just thinking, it's seen better days. Look at how, how stained it is, the moss growing up on these pillars and so on. It could really do with a lick, lick of paint. That is a, a, a shabby and sorry state, so quite disgraceful, really. And then you see here, William IV, 1833, and there was a commander here in the 18th century with the improbable name of Sir Julius Caesar. Probably no relation to the Roman Caesar. So oh, look, why is that bloke jumping up and down? I wonder whether he's being punished or something like that. Where is that soldier? I saw with the naked eye. Never mind, you can't see very well from this angle. And they were filming him or something. So the soldiers live in there. Like the blocks of flats behind them, they live in there. Okay, so they parade up here and then they, they march over to Buckingham Palace. So we're in, a, we're in a royal park. Now, I always get this one confused. This is St. James's Park, this bit. It's a red road because it's a royal road. No protests are permitted. When they have state visits, they also have that ride in the horse-drawn carriage up the Mall, which is parallel to this, just the other side of these trees. A little pond, but beyond that pond is the Mall. Not Mall in British pronunciation, Mall because protests not permitted in the Royal Park, so if there's any protests, the police can legally arrest people just for chanting a slogan, waving a banner, anything which um, might cause a disaffection to the visiting head of state. Likewise, sometimes these things take place um, in, in, in uh, Windsor, and Windsor Great Park, same deal, it's a Royal Park, so uh, the police are permitted to close down demonstrations. Um, anyway, Septem Junta in Uno, there we have it again, seven joined in one, Junta a bit like Junction, and then you probably can't see very well from this angle, the flag of star, the, the Union flag, and um, the flag of the Brigade of Guards and so on. Now, I saw a Union flag flying at half-mast the other day, I suppose because the United Kingdom has reached that uh, lugubrious milestone of over 100,000 fatalities arising from uh, coronavirus. But uh, the United Kingdom will count something as a coronavirus death 
even if it was only one of several factors, if someone died within 28 days of a coronavirus diagnosis. But wait a second, that person could have actually recovered it. They might have died of something unrelated. So perhaps the, the UK takes too much of a broad view of what um, constitutes a coronavirus fatality. Um, we shall see. So they march out here, um, 11.30 in the morning, um, all, all every day apart from New Year's Day and Christmas Day, and right up to Buckingham Palace and the change in the guard. Obviously, they've not been doing it for about 10 months now because of coronavirus. Um, wearing their um, iconic red tunics, those black busbies, those bearskin hats. There used to be displays about joining this. And then I was always curious about this memorial. Arthur Sullivan, an Australian soldier who was here for the coronation of George VI, that parade in 1937, and somehow died in some accident. So it was erected by his Australian um, uh, comrades 21 years later. And look over here, that's the Victoria Memorial right in front of, Victor uh, of Buckingham Palace. So you see a bit more modern part of, um, of uh, Wellington Barracks, named in honour of an Irishman named the Duke of Wellington, who was a general, uh, the victor of Waterloo, subsequently a Tory Prime Minister, the Iron Duke, not because of his uh, supposed um, ferrous resolve, but no, uh, because he... Um, uh, he had to put iron railings on his house even stop people coming smashing the windows when he was deeply unpopular because of his reactionary propensity. Is his, um, in fact, he set his face against the Great Reform Act and so forth, had initially been against uh, the Catholic emancipation, but changed his tune on that one simply because he thought revolution was more likely if he didn't give way. All right, so that's enough for me and the Guards Chapel, and you see where they'll go up and where the change of guard would take place. There are some guardsmen there, it being winter when they're grey, great coats or a, a British warm uh, so you can't see the red tunics underneath but they don't have a whole load of them parading complete with marching band or um, the soldiers on horseback toodaloo